valuable ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the annual Interfaith Iftar. Uh, and we'll start our program with a recitation from the Holy Quran by Imam Khalid. Having a 
rich cultural district and multi-religious presence in Pakistan. We take pride in boasting our friends during Ramadan both in Pakistan and abroad. Today I am pleased to have representatives from Christians, Jewish, Hindu, Sikh, Buddhists, Muslims and other communities. Clearly the concept of fasting is not confined to one religion. In fact, it is part of all the major religions of the world and also practiced by several faith-based communities in one form or the other. The underlying message of fasting is also universal for our common humanity. Quest for achieving piety, self-discipline, and a lesson to share and care with others. This universal but sublime message has also an amazing relevance in our contemporary world. Occasions like interfaith of thought, promote dialogue, pluralism, and respect for each other's beliefs, and build bridges of peace and cooperation amongst communities and across nations. These are indeed some of the eternal and most cosmopolitan benefits of a divine teaching found in all the other cosmos. From our own perspective, since most of the Pakistanis believe and profess Islam, our religion teaches tolerance and a peaceful existence. A true believer of Islam is enjoined to respect all other religions and their respective beliefs. On the one hand, the Holy Quran states, there is no compulsion in religion. Chapter 11, verse 56. In yet another manifestation of coexistence, it reminds the Muslims, for you, your religion, and for me, mine. Chapter 109, verse 16. Ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned earlier, Pakistan is home to a multitude of ethnicities, <coughs> cultures, and faiths. In addition to the glorious mosques, we are also home to beautiful churches, famous Sikh Gurdwaras, and historic temples. I was just uh, discussing with our colleague uh, Sikh, uh, from Sikh community that, uh, the, that Baba Guru Nanak was born in Pakistan and we need to, uh, you know, he is very well respected by people of all faiths and a, every year a large number of Sikhs from all over the world in Pakistan they respect him. Baba and his teachings are also followed by people from across different religions. His message was also a message of peace, love, and affection for the humanity. Our constitution and laws provide protection to all citizens who profess and practice their religion. In this world of Twitter and other social media, we, where we get real-time information, I am sure we are mindful of the multifarious challenges confronting our global village. We are also aware how one odd incident in a far off place sends shocks <coughs> shock waves across the world. Religious dogmas, intolerance and extremism have unfortunately come to define this era. The recent unraveling turmoil and suffering in the Middle East is only a stark reminder of the need that we should learn to live in harmony peace. At the domestic front, these challenges are sometimes more insidious with underlying economic motives, but exploited in the name of Islam. In recent years, Pakistan, like many other countries, has witnessed occasional strains on cross religious and sectional. But I can assure you that the government of Pakistan is fully cognizant of its responsibilities to protect the constitutional and legal rights of all communities, all citizens irrespective of caste, color, or creed. 
Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif is committed to the vision of our founding father, Qaeda Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah, for a truly pluralistic and democratic Pakistan where all citizens enjoy equal rights and freedom, including the freedom to practice their faith. The ongoing massive campaign against terrorism across the board, not only in Waziristan but also in the urban centers of Pakistan, is the manifestation of our commitment that terrorism and extremism have no place in Pakistan. And we are determined to wipe this off from, from our land. In the legal domain, recently the Supreme Court of Pakistan has given a historic ruling regarding the protection of places of worship and properties of religious minorities. These are all important developments which we believe will help to stem the tide of terrorism and extremism in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, today more than ever before, we need religion and its common spiritual underpinnings as a unifying force for good. Let us resolve to reject extremism and work together to make peace and harmony prevail for the good of our common humanity and our shared heritage. Before concluding, I request all of you to join me in praying for world peace, mutual respect, and greater religious tolerance. I thank you.
share thoughts from some of our Christian texts and prophets. This is a section of a sermon preached by Jesus of Nazareth to a crowd of hungry, poor, and outcast people who followed him to a hillside by the Sea of Galilee. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are called children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and other all kinds of evil against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for the reward is great in heaven, for so they persecute the prophets who were before you. That's from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. And another wonderful prayer that many of you probably have heard, there's music set to it. It's a prayer attributed to St. Francis of Assisi, who lived during the 13th century. He was also one of the early Christians to initiate interfaith relations. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, harmony. Where there is error, truth. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, we grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. This is a time of special stress for the Jewish people, 
for my people. But it is also a time of special stress for our first cousins, the people of Palestine. May we reach the point as soon as possible where Israelis and Palestinians come to see themselves as first cousins and not as enemies. May the love of your unity inspire us to work for peace and reconciliation all over the world. And Adonai, may I see my own vision realized where one day every Jew can look at a woman who is wearing a hijab and say, that is a daughter of Abraham, that is my people. And every Muslim can look at a man with a yarmulke and say, that is a son of Ibrahim, that is my people. May we honor you with our heart and with our mind and above all else through our conduct. And may I say, Amen. Sahana Bhavatu, Sahana Bhavatu, 
sayings are part of our scriptures and we, we read them and we, we are enlightened by, by his powerful thought process. Sabna man manak thahan mool machang that just recognize that each human heart is a throne of the Creator, the Lord. And each heart is the most precious jewel ever created in this universe. So never ever try to break anyone's heart or try to cause harm to any soul. If you want to get the final embrace of your own Creator, if you have a desire to become one with God, then do not break anyone's heart. And 300 years later, again, a person who was born in Pakistan, Guru Nanak Dev Ji says, Sab jot jot hai soi, tis de chanan sab mein chanan hoi. He says, in every person is blessed by God's light. And don't think that your light is different than other person's light. It's the same light. And the switch of this light is, is one. If the switch is not on, then the light is not going to reflect it. So the switch is the same, is the same source which is reflecting in each human being. So recognize that. But that can only be done by having a sense of reflection, devotion, surrender. Gunanak says, that deepen your roots in God, only then you will become that human being like a tree who will give shade to others and who will give the fragrance to others and who will share the sweet fruits to others. So in the sense of devotion and surrender, let us all join that it is not only as a, a, a time of reflection and surrender for Muslims, but for all of us. All those who claim to be religious and spiritually oriented, we cannot do any spirituality if we don't have a sense of devotion and surrender. And may Vahiva bless you all and your families and bless the families, those who are suffering and those who have suffered in the latest airplane, airplane uh, downing in Ukraine. And uh, may God give wisdom to our political leaders and our religious leaders because they also need blessing more so than the political leaders, to really guide the humanity in the right direction and bring all of us together. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity.